now, Chapter 9 of James and the Giant Peach. Enjoy. Chapter 9 Hungry and trembling, James stood alone out in the open, wondering what to do. The night was all around him now, and high overhead a wild white moon was riding in the sky. There was not a sound, not a movement anywhere. Most people, and especially small children, are often quite scared of being out of doors alone in the moonlight. Everything is so deadly quiet, and the shadows are so long and black, and they keep turning into strange shapes that seem to move as you look at them, and the slightest little snap of a twig makes you jump. James felt exactly like that now. He stared straight ahead with large, frightened eyes, hardly daring to breathe. Not far away, in the middle of the garden, he could see the giant peach towering over everything else. Surely it was even bigger tonight than ever before. And what a dazzling sight it was. The moonlight was shining and glinting on its great curving sides, turning them to crystal and silver. It looked like a tremendous silver ball lying there in the grass, silent, mysterious, and wonderful. And then, all at once, little shivers of excitement started running over the skin on James's back. Something else, he told himself. Something stranger than ever this time is about to happen to me again soon. He was sure of it. He could feel it coming. He looked around him, wondering what on earth it was going to be. The garden lay soft and silver in the moonlight. The grass was wet with dew, and the million dewdrops were sparkling and twinkling like diamonds around his feet. And now, suddenly, the whole place, the whole garden, seemed to be alive with magic. Almost without knowing what he was doing, as though drawn by some powerful magnet, James Henry Trotter started walking slowly toward the giant peach. He climbed over the fence that surrounded it and stood directly beneath it, staring up at its great bulging sides. He put out a hand and touched it gently with the tip of one finger. It felt soft and warm and slightly furry, like the skin of a baby mouse. He moved a step closer and rubbed his cheek lightly against the soft skin. And then suddenly, while he was doing this, he happened to notice that right beside him and below him, close to the ground, there was a hole in the side of the peach. Well, it sounds like things might be getting more exciting for James. Even he could feel the magic building around him. This is another example of the author using some foreshadowing and letting us know as readers that things are about to happen. Did you also notice that he used more figurative language? Pay close attention, because when you hear the words like or as, and comparing two different things, that is a simile. And that's something you might want to use in your own writing someday. I hope you enjoyed chapter nine, and I look forward to reading chapter 10 for you. Thank you for listening.